Good morning. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. We haven't seen you in two weeks. I feel like it's been a lifetime. Nah. <laughs> nah. Two weeks. Two weeks. Just two weeks. It's okay. There's been a lot going on in this here real estate market, so sometimes you just don't have time to do the things you thought you were going to be able to do. So, unfortunately, reality got cut, but... Here we are again. Mm, it's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> Sorry to you. Yay for my clients. <laughs> yeah, I had showings last Monday. I couldn't make it work. No. So, when you're out here in these streets with these buyers, you just got to go, go, go. You got to go, go, <laughs> go, and then go 18 other times. Yep. Yeah. It's super great being out there. Um, yeah, so I guess two weeks ago, did you, whenever you were doing your recap, did you just do this last week, or did you? Why didn't I just do this last week? Well, we didn't go on for two weeks. I didn't know if you went back two weeks. Oh, either. God, no. Okay. Please, no. Two weeks ago was a blur. I'm not recapping two weeks no. back. Well, I've got all my lessons learned are from two weeks back, so uh, um, we're gonna... Short and sweet. <laughs> hey, Josh. Hey, Becky. Aww. Yeah. Josh Dukes. Jay Dukes. <laughs> <laughs> I need uh, to use the restroom as soon as I sat down. Well, we can do that while I'm recapping. Okay, great. Two weeks now. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of fluids, <gasps> Yeah, so two weeks ago, it was an absolute disaster. So I'm sure all of you guys have been, not not all of you. I mean, I don't know who keeps up with the real estate market and who doesn't keep up with the real estate market. But we have some really crazy stuff happening right now where things are going under contract. You've got 18 offers if it goes in the market. You... You're going 20, 30, 40, even $100,000 above list value, waiving appraisals, waiving contingencies, waiving everything. But not everybody can. So the other part that is interesting is that there's a lot of movement coming from the district down into the suburbs. So in lies Liberty Knowles. I was um, going, uh, we had two houses on the market. They both went under contract within 24 hours of coming soon, sight unseen. Um, and they both went under contract for really well above list price. And the nerve-wracking part about that is always the appraisal right so 11 liberty knolls i sold my client this house and then whenever he got pcs to germany unexpectedly we, we had to go in and, and put it on the market we put it up for just enough for him to be able to break even we ended up getting it a, a great um a great contract price and then two days before settlement i get a phone call from the agent saying hey, the appraisal came back and it came in extraordinarily low, like low to the point where the bank was like, this is unacceptable. There's no way that the comp support this. We need you to look at this. They had a, a review panel and they had three appraisals give the opinion. Well, the guy absolutely refused to do anything. And the appraisal came in $60,000 lower than the contract price. So we are freaking out and I'm like, what is gonna happen? So we ended up getting, they ended up firing this appraiser and will never, Use, this company will never use him again and so they end up hiring a new guy i go down there last week to meet him and have this big blown conversation with him and everything and sure enough the next day it appraised and i'm like oh my god praise god this is the this is the best but it just goes to show you how giant the fluctuations are between the appraisers like there's no difference it's just one person's opinion and the bank goes on this one person's opinion so get you, whenever you're going and you're out there and you're looking for a listing agent and you're looking to make sure that, you know, they're going to be doing your, your houses of the best services that they could possibly be, especially in this market, make sure you ask them, are you going to meet the appraiser? Are you going to provide comps for this? Because if they're not, there's a large chance that you could get a beautiful contract on the house. But if they're not there to help justify that value, then guys, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Other than it's just it's a bloodbath out there and it's it's nerve wracking for everybody involved, especially like imagine if you're a, if you're a buyer and you think that your house, like, there's a possibility that's not going to appraise maybe up to the full price. But like if you waive the appraisal and then some jerk appraiser comes in there and he appraises at $60,000 low, guess who's screwed? It's you. So it's been a very, very stressful last two weeks for a number of our properties. So the 11 Liberty Knowles came back great. And then praise God to whom all blessings flow, 33 came back the next day and it appraised at the actual value of the home. So that was, that's wonderful for everybody. So we're smooth sailing to closing on that one too. But that's not, that's not the only thing. It's like I had another one come back low, even though we justified the price, the appraiser came back $10,000 low, which was still $10,000 
higher than the original list price, so everybody was happy. Um, but then we had another one, same thing. It's just like a ten thousand dollar fluctuation. So there's a lot of very stressed out agents and a lot of very stressed out sellers um, <laughs> and a lot of very stressed out buyers. To be perfectly honest, um, Jen's been working with a lot of buyers on the other side of this, and you know, she I'm can... working really closely with the listing agents. Once we get under contract, like, yo, what do your comps look like that you're going to give this appraiser? Yeah, absolutely. So it's and... you know everybody's working towards the same goal at the end of the day. So it's it uh, like you are a team with the mm -hmm. listing agent as the buyer's agent at that point. Yeah, you have to make sure that everything is going to come out and there's going to be no unexpected stuff at the end of the day because it is the listing agent's responsibility to be able to get the comps to the appraiser but at the same time like you know if you're you, if you have a good agent they're going to do comps for you prior to ever going under contract so you know what's going on like here's a perfect example i got a contract in one of my listings this weekend i had a long conversation with the guy and he was like look i know that what this house we're very familiar with what these houses are going to appraise at and it's going to be x but we're going to write it at this just to make sure. And then she's willing to pay $10,000 over the highest, or like the price price. And then we should be good to go. I'm like, all right, you guys are wonderful. Um, but that's what has to happen. Like you have to have these conversations just so, uh, you know, three days before settlement, it doesn't come back and be like, oh, surprise. It's not going to appraise. Now I'm out. Now the seller who's already packed up all the boxes and they're on the way out the house. You know, now there are all sorts of screwed too. Um, yeah. Thankfully, we have not had that happen yet, but we have had settlements pushed back by almost 30 days at this point because of financing being. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking well, about. I was no, like, I'm talking about. 42. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, no, I was talking about Will's. This started months ago. Whenever he oh, sold, whenever yeah. he sold. And yeah, it's like yeah. they were they were going to go to settlement. And then it was like, we can't go to settlement. It's like, what do you mean we can't what go to settlement? What do you mean? Well, we're going to be fine. We just have to switch lenders. What? <laughs> Not um, what you want to hear. Yeah, but at that point, what are you going to do? If they say that you can settle in two weeks, are you going to go back to the open market and do this process all over nope. again? Or are you just going to let it ride? <laughs> Especially if the house appraises. I mean, it's just, it's been, it's a lot, man. This market is absolutely traumatizing for everyone. All the more reason to take time for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you have, you have to. to. For you have sure. To. Yeah, so that was my two weeks ago. And it just continued this week. I mean, Friday, everything went to hell in a handbasket for a closing. Hell in a handbasket. Hell in a handbasket. Hell in a handbasket. The hell in a handbasket. <laughs> We'll get to that. How did my how did Monday go, Jen? Uh, last Monday I started the day at six a.m. and ended it at two a.m. <laughs> Sounds right. That's why you got no real itty last week. <laughs> yeah, she's been going out to places like Warrington and Robert oh my gosh, yeah, all sorts of stuff. Um, I wanted to tally because you know I keep track of like all my showings and everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. So what what was last week? What are, what's today? The fifteenth. Let's see, four, six, twelve, fourteen. I stopped tallying, oh, the Johnsons, we went out and saw five, it was 14 plus five, 19, so I showed 19 properties last week. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Three sets of buyers, 19 properties. Oh, man. But what I will say, dig into these builders, like find new build. A lot of builders are opening up sites right now. Um, I saw some stuff come in this morning. I'm like, this mm -hmm. is fantastic because new build's been pretty much a thing in the past for the last like six months because yeah. the building materials have not been able to be found. So the prices are up, the build times are longer. It's a big, yep. it's a mess. Yeah, I'm taking, a, I'm taking as many buyers that route as I can who can't afford to pull money from, you know, 401s or, you know, liquidate mm -hmm. investments, things like that. Right. Um, it's a really great alternative. And then they get what they want. Oh, yeah. I mean, the competition is removed. Especially and then if they, they can, can go build. month. Can they go month to month on their rentals? So, yes. Um, and some of them actually have family in the area. So they're mm. able to even stash what they'd be paying in rent. Suck it up and live with family for, you know, four to six, seven months. Mm -hmm. And then, ta-da! Yeah, so that's been a huge weight lifted off of everyone's shoulders for some of yeah. my clients, which is really exciting. Yeah, because what we're seeing, like she mentioned pulling out money from the 401ks, that's exactly how people are winning right now. So you're having to guarantee X amount of money. If you're not able to drop your appraisal altogether, which is very scary for a lot of people, especially mm -hmm. first-time home buyers, people are pulling from their 401ks to be able to be liquid enough to not only pay your own closing costs and put down your needed down payment, but also to guarantee that you can pay X amount above 
a pro- I mean, like you had a situation with your poor renters that they they were one of how many offers in the house that they live in? Eighteen. One of eighteen offers in the house that they live in, and they didn't even get it. And they, you guys were like way above it on list. Goes to show people get funny with their money, man. Mm-hmm. They had an incredible relationship with that landlord That's over the so last sad. year and a half of living there. Yeah, incredible. And then once those bids started coming in. I mean, you can't blame them. It's an investment. At the end of the day, it's all about the money. But at the same, and they, the winning bid ended up dropping their appraisal, right? Mm-hmm. Everything. Everything. <laughs> yep. I hate this market. I hate yeah. this market for. But, good morning, Franklin and Gary. Hi, and by the way, Gary oh, says you guys are super goofy and amazing. Um, I agree. I uh, think I need new contacts. I can't see. <sighs> what? Oh, that just made it worse. Yeah, and then John to be your cousin says, because. do y'all work with Bobo? We do for our pre-appraisals. We call Bobo and have him, if, like, if we have a property that we know needs to be pre-appraised um, just to be able to get a value because they're all over the place. Yeah. Literally on the same street right now in this market, you can have one up at 600000 you can have one up at 750000 And yeah. there's not any real difference yeah. other than the agent has not taken into consideration the area as a whole. Yeah. So, yeah. And Bob was super conservative with his, yeah, his values, exactly. too. So that's, like, it's reassuring. Yeah. But, you know, if Bob comes in a certain number, then chances are. It's going to be good anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What did yeah, Ethel say? Did I miss all of Ethel? She did. I'm so proud of you. I was just talking about you guys this weekend to the florist shop. Aww. How you got how cool you guys are and the amazing work you do for others. Oh, that's all I love you for saying that. Oh, we miss yeah, you. We do miss you. And that is I mean, that is the platform of our business is like not only do we sell homes, but like truly we have a servant's heart and that's part of the our team culture. Oh, good morning, Melissa. We have all sorts of people out here today. This is fantastic. This is wonderful news. President's Day, people aren't working? No, I guess. Huh. We should go live. On a holiday for Elton. <laughs> Reality done. Only going live on Only holidays. on holidays going forward. Done. Ah. Oh, let's see, everybody. I love that sparkling cup. I know, isn't this fabulous? So my friend Ashley makes these, right? So we have the Easton Ivy on the back. And if you would have seen me last night, it was really ridiculous. My for those of you who don't know, my favorite movie, actually favorite musical, is The Greatest Showman. So a million dreams for the world we're gonna make. Yeah, last night I was screaming, listening to the soundtrack on my way home because we went to on a listening appointment late last night. Um, and so on my way home, I was just living my best life, singing into my cup. Mm-hmm. Singing into my cup. <laughs> Sipping on a mimosa. Nope. Aww. Are you still in Miami? Yeah. Oh, thanks, guys. Ashley, everybody loves your cup. And then, I mean, we yeah. did kind of go OD. You got this really beautiful leopard print one and mm-hmm. all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I mean, so they also told me that I slap my hands a lot, so now every time I think it's for emphasis. Oh, hi, Victoria. Good to see you, honey. Um, so yeah, Tuesday, what was your Tuesday like? Oh, well, it was supposed to be my day off, but drive down to Richmond, mm-hmm. train with Jared, and then I did showings on the way back. <laughs> part, of the night, left, part of the part of the night showing. And then showings on the way back, which it worked because mm-hmm. it was like Stafford Fredericksburg, so coming from Richmond, I just. <laughs> Made my way back to, to Woodbridge. <laughs> Worked out lovely. That does work out lovely mm-hmm. if you're coming from Richmond. You know, it Richmond. I <laughs> Richmond is so close to us, guys. Like, in, yeah. in the reality is, it's like it's in traffic. It could take you the same amount of time to get to Richmond as it would to take to DC going north. Yeah. It's and but it's a different MLS. And yeah. that drives me nuts because I'm like, we could easily pop down into Richmond for a day and show houses down there. <laughs> you drove to Warrington. <laughs> Maybe take a listing. Yes. Um, but I've always wanted to be able to, but they have a different MLS system. So it's yeah. a different association. It's a different MLS. And I'm like, come on, guys. Richmond is so close. Yeah. Especially to us because we live out in the suburbs. We're basically in between D.C. Well, Fredericksburg is really in between D.C. and yeah, um, right. Richmond. But it's a super easy ride. You just get on there and go get on and go get on and go there's no difference between going to baltimore than going to richmond but yet we can go to baltimore because it's the same mls true story right super weird baltimore's cute baltimore well parts of baltimore is cute mm-hmm. very cute um yeah. i like the parts you can see the raven stadium from <laughs> or the right or the what is it the bay or whatever they call that the what is that inner harbor inner harbor uh-huh. so pretty the over. bay the bay Annapolis. <laughs> true the bay there man there's so much water in yeah. maryland it's so pretty you guys got a pretty state over there mm-hmm. good morning q terrible drivers but a pretty terrible state. drivers morning, no you. shade to anyone out there but ter- oh shade <laughs> No poems about that. It is terrible. I was driving back from Silver Spring yesterday um, after a little studio time, 
And oh my God, there were cars like battling each other of who's going to merge first coming yeah. onto a ramp. I'm like, oh, let them go. It's going to open up to the beltway in like two tenths of a mile and you can go wherever you need to go. Like, just stupid. I don't understand it. Because, you know, Maryland drivers, they think that we drive too slow. Uh huh. For and, goodness, for lovers. Right. And then we think they drive like they have a death wish. And so, That's out of hell. <laughs> out of control. Idiot. Hi, Jasmine. Wait, what, what did Jonathan say? Okay, I need your cup. I'll put you in contact with Aww. Ashley Jonathan. She's incredible. She just moved to Kentucky. Um, but she's still, she's making them from over there. She's got the most glitter you could ever imagine in your life. And for somebody who was a ferret in their past life, it's pretty fantastic. <laughs> Franklin, Maryland drivers are the absolute worst. Uh-huh. All the shade, yes. <laughs> I mean, I just didn't want to be rude, but like legit, where did you get your driver's licenses from, guys? It's, it's out terrible. of control. It's yeah. terrible. I'm like, we don't die today. And I don't think their cops really care either because I was strongly driving with my phone in my hand like this and right. looked over and I was like, oh, what's up, PG County? <laughs> and you're not in, in Maryland, you're not allowed to have any of your phones in your hand. Anything. I don't think you're allowed to even talk on the phone. Uh, I, you're not. Well, I mean, you're, if you have it on your car, like, hands-free completely. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's so weird. Ugh. That's still dangerous, though. Like, I don't know how many times I've squirreled out and just been somewhere else in Lava Land talking on the mm-hmm. phone and be like, oh, dang, I missed my turn. Oh, dang, this happened. Yeah, so no, she said she wanted to know if they could balance the CD. Kelly, if you're listening, yes, Lucky is available to balance the CD. But now. I now I talked to Evelyn <laughs> yesterday. Now, so, so today. yes, that's okay. why I texted her this morning. So I, just <laughs> like, oh my God. I just giggled. Um, so funny text. Love the comfortability that my clients have without knowing like what my story is. But happy President's Day. In other words, I'm happy we have a new president. <laughs> And then he said some other oh, stuff, but that's hilarious. It's amazing. Ladies, nothing but smiles listening to y'all this morning. Oh, we love you too, oh, Laura. Yeah. Wait, what did Melissa say? The pa- the wait, that just passed for Virginia too. We oh, also- holding the phone. Yeah. Oh, oh I've I already no got idea. ticketed for that. Wait, that was before or after that it got passed? It was definitely in the new year. Like it was in the month of oh, January. Oh man. You know what else is legal in Virginia now? Marijuana. Oh, was it? Yeah. Hmm. Like almost completely, I think. It's not just decriminalized like it is in the district and Maryland. It's it's actually Maryland. it's actually legal now, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought I read that. Hmm. Yeah. Um Anyhow, what, yeah, what, you what do else? Tuesday? What did I do Tuesday? Uh, I got the listing agreement signed for eight ten Belmont. Yeah. So ah, the like the yes, pretty little River condo. Club. River Club. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. They can look so there was a leak in this building by I guess about over, over a year ago now at this yeah. point. But the great thing about condos is whenever you have a leak, you have condo insurance. And so they pay for everything. So they got a brand new, beautiful mm-hmm. kitchen, brand new hardwoods throughout, brand new paint. I'm like, this is basically a new construction listing. It's yeah. so pretty. Uh, and then they went and they put in French doors to be able to, to do the den offs. And I'm, I'm surprised. So we've been talking about how the condo market has pretty much slowed down. Like single family, anything that has any kind of land to it is like um, offers on offers on offers. Mm-hmm. But the condos uh, it's a little bit slower i've had i had six showings this week which i was was surprised for the condo and potentially two incoming offers so tbd nothing in hand but i think that one done quickly because i got one just kind of waiting oh really (laughs) just waiting to see what happens there go on at the same time no um very busy day with this phone right andrew is like for the record that's flood or leak in river club it was not because of anything with the building there Uh was um a rental unit they had installed a like a crappy what is that thing for your butt in the toilet a bidet yeah a bidet crappy thing for your butt yeah and, (laughs) and they were on travel nobody was home and somehow it was running and so that's what caused no kidding yep that yeah, is it out wasn't of anything control. with the building. It wasn't anything crazy. It was carelessness slash wow. poorly installed the day. That's so unfortunate. Yeah. It's like I was talking to one of the guys over. It's like, hot guy. What's his name? Dennis. Dennis. <laughs> Same thing. I was book. like, great. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, hot guy. Um, Dennis, he, um, he had a leak in their unit. Or they had, there was a mm. leak over there in their unit first. It wasn't careless. It was just a bad... The piping. Mm-hmm. There was a something that was going on over there. Yeah. What did, what did Gary say? 
I see a podcast in you guys' future. I'm trying to work and can't focus because you guys are so entertaining while talking real itty. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know. Hi. We only thank you. Y'all talk so fast. I have the captions on. <laughs> she talks so fast. I do talk fast. I need captions in real life listening to her. You know what's funny? I actually did. I turned the captions on. We've never turned the captions on before, but I turned them on this morning to see how they would go because I wanted just to see. But it's going in the back because there's like a little lag. There's like a 10 second lag, so there's... Wait, people watching can read our captions? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> it's like a Netflix series. It is kind of like a Netflix series. I watch captions on my TV shows. Also because I keep the volume super low, and I'm not really a very really good at mm-hmm. so I like to read it mm-hmm. and process it that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Wednesday, we had our team meeting. Wednesday uh-huh. is usually, de- for me, it's dedicated to the team. Like, working with, like, meeting with Angie and Andrew, and making sure everything is good, meeting with Q, working out, all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Wednesday, like, more, Ew, showings. Wednesday, more showings. More showings. Yeah, actually, <laughs> uh, Wednesday was fun because that was when like the snow and sleet and stuff had started, mm-hmm. and so I had showing scheduled for Warrington. I got twenty minutes from well, twenty minutes out. I got the first showing canceled because the driveway was icy. I'm like, whatever. So I call my clients. I'm like, listen, either we can reschedule the second one or we can just go to it and like get it done. I'm like, well, we're already on our way, so we'll just get it done. I get 20 minutes from the second property, and they call, and they're like, uh, in the words of Randy Jackson, it's a no for me, dog. <laughs> Fortunately, I absolutely love this client, and they are hilarious, so I wasn't even mad, and I was able to use the drive, the hour and 15-minute drive, to have some good conversations with people, oh, but, good. yeah, it's good, but let's put money back in my gas tank <laughs> or, you know, in my pocket. <laughs> Make sure you log your stuff this week so you can get the gift card for gas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so every month we do a contest for the team to see who gets the most appointment. And whoever gets the most appointments gets a $50 gift card to wherever they want. And usually picks either Starbucks or gas. Yeah. So. Priorities. <laughs> Priorities. Uh, but that takes me, to, I'll circle back to that. But that was my lesson learned on showings in general. Mm-hmm. Oh, we'll talk about that when we get there. Showings in general. There's actually, I think, are you going to talk about retainer fees? Two lessons. <laughs> So, they go hand in hand. Yeah, I saw there was a there was a post on Lab so Lab Coat Agents is one of it's a huge forum on Facebook that has like fifty thousand agents in it or something from across the world. Uh, and anyway, and something came up. It's like, oh, there was somebody who they charged. It was only two hundred dollars. They only charged a two hundred dollar retainer yeah. fee, and it was for gas and time spent. And if in the event that they settled, they would give that back. Beautiful. And it was mind boggling to me how much pushback other agents gave that. And they're like, it's unprofessional. It's this, that, and the no, other. It's not. No, it's not. I mean, like. Do you, I, I guess it's like, do you guys understand how real time. estate works? It's like we are independent contractors, and there is no lo- there's loyalty to our sphere and the people that we've been talking to for a long time, obviously. But whenever you start getting out here and working with internet leads and people that you don't know from Adam, you are literally looked at like a door opener. Yep. They don't recognize like all of the stuff that goes into it, and that's why buyers consultations are so important. But every other professional that you work with, a lawyer, a doctor, mm-hmm. anybody else, they're going to have a, a freaking accountant. Yep. You're, you're going to have a retainer fee of some sort in order for them to do work for you. They're not just going to do it and hope to God that they get right. paid one day. Yeah. So why is it that real estate is not in that same boat? Or I guess why, is, and some people do charge retainer fees and kudos to you guys. If like, I think we, I will end up starting. Yeah. I think it's a good idea to just because like it protects your time. It lets you know that the person is serious and they're not yeah. going to have you out here watching or going to 50 different houses. And at the end of the day, it's nominal. Like it would, it's not like you're gonna charge them three grand or right. something. Right. It would just be something small. Yeah. So let us know how you feel about that. I think I'm gonna put that out to like a like a jot form or like a poll or something, just to our like our past clients to see how they would respond to it. Yeah. To do something. Yeah. I think it also might be valuable to you know I love all my crap. Yeah. Valuable to put into perspective the hours of mm-hmm. work that go into not to mention the drive and the gas, but just the hours, hours of the preparation. Going to. Yeah, because you have to call. Right. A good a good realtor is going to call ahead of time and see if you have any offers. See what like if you know that your folks have a serious interest in this house to get the skinny on everything, so that's time. Then it's like going in and like mapping out these routes to make sure that and yes, the MLS does have the ability to be able to map it out kind of. But no, Q says I think that makes perfect sense. See we got one. Yeah. Um 
Well, but, it can map it out for sure, but then you also factor in like, okay, well, maybe somebody's having an open house. Maybe you're going out with your buyer on Saturday, mm -hmm. but their open house is happening for some of the properties. So mm -hmm. it's that logistic planning of, oh, okay, not, when can I send them to the opens? When can we meet up live and in person? What about the houses that have 18 showings on it and the and times are blocked off? there is no off. time. Exactly. Right. You have so to then call that do? agent, ask if you can get in. Like, it's... <laughs> <laughs> so fun. So great. So fun. What did Franklin say? Because you have realtors inside the industry who are trying to discount the agent's worth. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. I, so I have, we work with a referral, a referral system and I, mm -hmm. uh, I had a buyer's consult with a first time home buyer, but he had, but he works with a, his budget's really, really big. And so as I'm having a conversation with them, he, he, first he asked me, he goes, well, I want you to forego your commission I want, because I don't feel like I, you would be working for me if you're getting paid by the seller side. And I was like, well, I appreciate that. And I would love for you to pay me for my time independently. What do you want to happen after we see a house that you want? Are you going to write the contract yourself? Are you going to pay me for what the commission was due? And like, and it was all these things that he didn't think about, yeah. even though he's brilliant. And it, it, it was a lot. The moral of the story is like, we had to have a lot of long conversations about like how this process actually works and what is going on and the agent's actual value. We are not just a door opener for a yeah. hundred dollars an hour or whatever it is. Like right. that's not how like we are. We have a fiduciary responsibility to you to be able to protect your investment, to protect your capital. Because at the end of the day, it's where your family lives, but mm -hmm. it's also how you're going to build wealth generationally. So anyway, I digress. What did Franklin <laughs> say? Because you have realtors and so yeah, well, you already read that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's absolutely, yeah, absolutely accurate mm -hmm. because everybody thinks like, Oh, I'm gonna go get my real estate license. It's gonna be so fun to show houses. Like, guys, you don't understand what this industry is like for those of us who are. I mean, I'm gonna say it at the top. Like, yeah. who, like we see it all. We see all of it, and we see agents who are not trained and who they like. They're doing you such a disservice. And thank God you have people like us and the majority of our friends in this industry that we mm -hmm. know too. We'll take care of you, and we'll use it as a teaching opportunity and go through everything and like explain to them the reason why the re what they wrote in the contract is wrong and how this is gonna end up poorly for everybody involved. Yeah. Um, it could be the other way and we could just be sharks and just let it ride and let like let everybody right. get screwed over But right. at the end of the day, it's not good because our clients would end up getting screwed over too. So yeah. Well, then you see like you said like the the people that we do business with on the team and then outside of the team You see the same people over and over again. You oh, yeah. see the same top agents. So oh, yeah. you want to keep Strong relationships with those agents mm -hmm. um, And keep a good uh, good rep behind your name. Yeah. You know, it's uh, true. Reputation what? She said, that's why I want no parts. So Q came over and took <laughs> over to Q. Q cause she is adamant her, about that. Right. She's like, nope, nope. She came I'm over. I'm leave that to y'all. Y'all got this. For sure. She came over to the team to take over the safety company at the beginning. I'm thinking about <laughs> these agents in these streets. <laughs> oh, just Dang. angry. Um, anyway, but she's been adamant that she wants no part of the real estate. Because people keep asking, like, oh, you're in staging. Are you going to be in real estate now? The answer is nah. <laughs> she says it with a straight face. Straight face. face. Like, I'll yep. leave that to them. That's their Not ministry. about it. Yep. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. But <laughs> it is very rewarding, but it is hella hard work. Super hard work. Hard, and and hard it is, work. like she said, it is rewarding. And we do love it. We love this industry. And we'll be in this industry yeah. until probably the day that we die. Because there's... <laughs> Nothing like it, but it's a lot more than you think. Yeah. So if you're considering getting into the first, if you're considering getting into the industry, have a real conversation with somebody who's not just going to tell you it's great, you should do it. Yeah. <laughs> because there's so much more to it. Lying. Yeah. <laughs> it is great. It but is they're great. Lying. They're withholding information. They're withholding information that you should probably know before you spend five thousand dollars on all of your <laughs> licenses and fees and tests and classes. And yeah. And all of that stuff. It's so nice. indeed, but Thursday, yeah, Thursday, I um, I ended up meeting contractors over because eight ten. We also put in a brand new frameless shower door. It's Ooh. so pretty. Yeah, so I met contractors over there this morning, that, that morning, and then Andrew and I staged, and then I met Q mm. for the walkthrough of Harborside, and what else? Oh, social committee meeting. On, so, yeah, mm. you were out in show <laughs> showings, guys. Guess what she did on Saturday or on Thursday showings <laughs> it was a slightly relaxing day in the first half of the day though um nice. which was nice after like the last 72 hours of like mm -hmm. feeling like complete and utter chaos mm -hmm. um so yeah slightly relaxing and then the evening showings which was cool and then friday same thing the morning started off i <laughs> I like to talk about sparkles. The Thank you, my mm -hmm. Amy Stones. I'm obsessed with rhinestones. I'm a rhinestone cowgirl. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but I sat and you know, worked, worked away while they did my toesies. Yeah. toesies. I love yeah, that. So that was good. Do you see this bitch's arms? <laughs> 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 oh, I probably shouldn't have said the B word, but I, oh, I did. did. Sorry, world. Sorry, Facebook. But I, I am so proud of her. She has got like the thank you. Her body transformation is stupid. Since she won't share with me her before and afters, I have to get them from her sister. You saw them though, because she shared it. Yes, because she shared it. But <laughs> she put something else on Facebook. Like, on the, on Instagram, I think you saw it. It's like it, I. You don't look real. Suzanne like, did. Yeah. The, tra the transformation that you've made from this time last year, it doesn't look real. I'm like, you never look like that. I don't understand. But That's like, what everybody yeah, else like, said. <laughs> like, Evelyn was smart. Yes, Evelyn was like, no. no. Was like, Who is that? Who I was, was like, that? party of one or three. Oh my gosh, it was out of control. <laughs> but that goes to show dressing for your body is a skill. It's a like, super I covered skill. that, all that thing up. Well, because I mean, you're lucky in the sense like it's just your midsection because everything mm -hmm. else, like your face stays thin, your arm, well, your face, yeah. no, kind of. Yeah. She I mean, it the all same. sits there, there for sure, yeah. but like it was, you could see it everywhere. Like I just looked puffy everywhere. <laughs> like stay puff marshmallow man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It was out of control. Her body transformation is out of control. Is a Peloton ride next? What? Peloton. Peloton. Well, we've got the Peloton coming in the middle of, I guess, what March. month is it? March. Yeah, March. mid March. Wait. I won't ride though. Like I, I was talking to Kelly about this. She was like, "Girl, my butt cannot handle this seat." Mm -mm. I would be buying the most obnoxious, ridiculous, overpriced, old, yeah, yeah from, cushion. Yeah, bike. it hurts. Those Peloton, like, kudos to people who can ride the bikes. But like yesterday during our little workout session for Easton accountability, I had to ride out, the ride out of the saddle just to try to get my heart rate up, Ooh, just because my even bigger workout. It right hurts your butt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, staged all that stuff. Long to Thursday. Showing? Thursday. More showing? Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, more showing. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then Friday. Friday. Nails. Oh, I got to see Lauren. I went over there for literally 35 minutes. Wait, which Lauren? Um, DC Lauren. Oh, Dawson. L. Lauren. Oh, yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I told her, I was like, uh, I'm just going to come and eat one of my meals and then I'm going to go. <laughs> and so sure enough, I like ate one of my meals uh -huh. and like she gave me a tour. She's in this cute little apartment off of Rhode Island. Oh, Super cute. She's still so happy back in her own space. I love it for her. Yeah. It's very zen, very adorable. Okay. Um, and then so she didn't. Here. So she didn't buy. She just, she was no. renting and, and yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, she went with a, a cute little, she got like 700 square feet in the city. I was like, girl, <laughs> live in Lord. Live in Lord. <laughs> um, and then back down here for what we all thought was going to be a closing. <laughs> and then right. after three hours of wanting to lose my mind, I was like, I'm going to go to the grocery store and get my food to meal prep mm -hmm. because the, the weather was supposed to be aggressive anyway uh -huh. for the weekend. So I was like, let me just do it now before it gets crazy. So yeah, that worked out. Yeah. Yeah, Friday was a Friday was a day, man. It really was. It was that was actually my learning moment is in fact we'll just we'll just go ahead and go into the like learning moment. Right. right my learning moment is it's never cleared until it's clear. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what the lender says. Because it's always one more thing. It's like no matter like it was like this was the absolute craziest thing I've ever experienced in my entire history of real estate mm. it was just like everything's fine no just kidding no it's not okay well this gotcha. is all, like this is all we need everything is gonna be fine we're gonna be fine okay J -J. just kidding no 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 oh wait no okay wait one more time okay now well now we need this <laughs> and it was all day our lender had like our lender <laughs> didn't get to go to her see her nephew's birthday party i was that supposed hurts. to be i was supposed to be at dinner like for a valentine's day dinner at a freaking two-star michelin rated restaurant and, and i was on the physically there i was not and will even took a picture like it was so sad he took a picture of me on the phone like i was on the phone it's, number one i had renters calling me because they were airing all of their grievances about how much that they are disappointed in the process uh, of like and then they renters of a listing of, a listing of mine yeah. and i'm like i don't know why i'm like and i sat there and listened to her to, so she could talk to me about everything that I'm sorry, it's in the contract, lady. I mean, you have to show the house 90 days. And we're, we're even trying to get, like, not even doing that. We're trying to do a Matterport so no one has to actually physically going to your Jeez. property. It's been a lot. She was a lot. Um, but, and then dealing with the, trying to beg the title company to stay open, trying to beg the lender to be able to get all the stuff out. And they they stuck it out with us until about 7 o'clock. Um, and then we finally got the clear to close at 7.30. Yeah. 
Seven thirty-two. Seven thirty-two. We got to clear the close, <laughs> and I was like, I was just like, I was ready to throw my phone. I was like, this is a five hundred dollar dinner, guys. Like, I would love to be able to sit here and enjoy all the things and listen to the chef come over and explain what we're eating yeah. and their pairings and all of this stuff. But I, lo- it was just Saturday. Friday sucked. Yeah. Friday sucked for everybody. Friday sucked for our poor buyer. Friday yeah. sucked for the. The listing, Jen, it sucked. It just sucked. Not everybody. We it all just had our, sucked. Yeah. We all had our, our part of <sighs> suck. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. But, you know. It's never cleared until it's actually cleared, no matter what they say. You're welcome, Franklin says. Thank you, Franklin. Thank you, smart Franklin. Smart Franklin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Your moment. Ariel. Ariel. I read your paper. It says learning moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> aerial search. Property search. So especially when you're driving an hour and 15 minutes because that Wednesday Warrington showing that I showed up to and 20 minutes out, my clients were like, it's a no for me, dog. If we would have looked at the satellite aerial picture, we would have known that it did not have curb appeal and that it had a lot of really not nice things right across the street and in the backyard next door. Um, it just weren't going to fly for my client. Mm. So, yeah. And I'm not just going to have, like, I'm tweaking my buyer presentation to where, okay, this is what I'm going to do for you, but this, this is, is what, what you're you going to do, do for, for yourself. Us. Yeah. yeah. Like they, you have to give, you have to give some homework to your clients. Um, I have, feel like I have to give some homework to my clients because we can't do it all. If we're showing 19 properties, I can't do an aerial search on 19 homes, screenshot it, send you the information. Like. The retainer fee at that point would be thirty five hundred dollars and not three hundred and fifty dollars. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, definitely doing an aerial search for properties before even trying to schedule them. Um, what was my other learning? There was another learning, something else that you said earlier on. I don't know. And you're like, I'll get to that. Yeah, know. I don't remember what day it was. It's okay. There's something else, but that was a big one. Mm. Um, because that could have been avoided. Mm-hmm. So it's like control the controllables, right? I'm just trying to get it unavoided. Yeah. Retainer fee. Retainer fee. Yeah, another We already talked about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my highlight was my two houses appraising that I didn't think I had a shot in the dark mm-hmm. about appraising. So getting both of those back and settling, that was my highlight for sure. Yeah. I had a couple highlights last week through all the chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Little. Oh, you know what else my highlight was? I almost won at poker. Oh yeah, I almost won at poker. We so I have taken to playing poker with our neighbor, who is actually like a legit. I don't know if you call him a card shark, but call it what it is. Call. I mean, he's really good, and so we've taken to playing on Friday nights with them. And this time it was just me and him at the, the end of the table. Oh <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. And we were both over it at that point because we've been sitting there for like four hours. So we just went all in and let fate have it before we even did the turn. So <laughs> I was like, let's see what happens. He won. He won. <laughs> he won. Yeah, I didn't have shit. Shocker, <laughs> shocker. shocker. Mm-hmm. Anyway, if you guys want to, if you guys want to play poker, hit us up. We usually play either Friday or Saturday nights. It's fun. That's cute. Mm-hmm. Didn't you guys do pool Saturday? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have a pool table. I actually, I had so much fun on Saturday. It was mm-hmm. the best. Good. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure it's it's always nice to be able to just like kick back after a cycle week too, you yeah, know, and just have a true. moment of like, yeah, no care in the world. Um, but yeah, highlights for me definitely my nails because I like to do things where I can just like shut off. Um, my Valentine's Day fell from Bella yesterday. It's the annual call. It's never anything exciting, but it's just hey, happy yeah. Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, and then. One of my buyers getting under contract. Oh, well, one of the 19 showings. They <laughs> were up against 16 offers. And they won. Yep. They were top two. We got the call that we were top two. We had to make a couple of modifications. And then... Whoop. Why did they choose your buyer? For those of you who'd like to know. Because they had money that they could... <laughs> <laughs> That's not even a gun. Because they had money they yeah, could throw at we, it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah. They... <sighs> um, they had a threshold that they were willing to come out of pocket for, you know, if in the effect, if in the event it doesn't appraise. So we escalated, we dropped our appraisal, we uh, agreed to not do a home inspection at all, but before the offer deadline, went back to the property and did kind of like a deeper dive at what was going on in the house. Um, just to give them that little extra peace of mind. 
And we could have taken a uh, home inspector with us, but we just, just didn't. Yeah, we just didn't. Franklin's been doing. Was it Franklin? Who said that? Was it you who said that you were doing the pre inspection, like bringing a. I don't know, I was talking like to somebody. Pre contract inspection. Yeah, pre contract yeah. inspection. I was like, how much is that? Apparently, it's a thing in DC. That's not really um, a thing out here. But I had actually reached out to Carl about doing a walk and talk previously. Uh -huh. What did he give me for pricing? Because um, it's a thing. They can totally do it. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Regular inspection for a house of this size, it was like 3,500 square feet. Normally, the inspection would be 555, but a walk and talk is 425. So, 100 bucks and some change off, 130 off. Um, so, it's still, I mean, it's not as much as an appraisal, but it's up there. It's close. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you definitely want to be doing that for a house that you are very serious about, or else you are racking up $400 and change over and over and over and over. Um, some people don't mind that. Yeah. And we also did very high EMD, too, just to show uh, seriousness. Just serious, yeah. seriousness. Which I never really thought that that was like... Well, because if your financing falls out or if something else crazy happens in this market, at least it's going to be worth it. It's so different here, guys. Like, the closer you get to the city, the more it is. Northern Virginia, the whole is typically around 1%, but you get down in Stafford, Fredericksburg, they don't care if you give them $50. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's, yeah. it's wild. It's wild out there. Talk about one of these builders out in Fredericksburg, and they were asking for a 5% 5 deposit, and I was like, no, no, no. we'll give you 1%, right. and even that's generous for you in Fredericksburg. <laughs> Stop playing these games. Right. Come on, guys. Yeah. Out of control. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Favorite food? Um, so last week was a struggle in this mm. menu situation. I can't have flavor because it triggers me wanting other things that are flavorful and delicious. So one of my meals, ground turkey, brown rice, spinach, and I had a tablespoon of salsa that I could add to it. Every time after I ate that salsa meal, mm -hmm. I was hungry for more. So, that's, if you look, you look at the, the every salsa I've ever seen has sugar in it, and that's what it's doing. Is it's triggering? No, oh, I'm sure. I mean, yeah. The carbs, the fats, the proteins, the whole thing. But uh, yeah, so I requested that we remove the salsa from that dish this week because I don't even want to. There were about four times last week that I was like, if I just have a glass of wine, if I just <laughs> eat one cookie, no one will ever know. Don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I am nine weeks out. I'm not going to cheat now. So we removed the salsa to remove that temptation. And That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. How about you? Favorite meal that you remember? I remember. <laughs> it should be your Valentine's I Day know. meal, it but be. I love that mini you bar. remember. Right. Mini Bar is my favorite. I think it's my favorite restaurant. Like, it's uh, Ruben is awesome. He's a chef over there and he's awesome. And their staff is awesome. And I just love it so much. Um, so that one is going to be the answer just because, like, I love mini bar, but mm. I don't remember most of it because mm. literally I was on the phone probably for 70%, yeah, for 70% of the meal. Did so. you eat anything delicious at home last week? You did. You guys did some cooking. I don't know. I don't know. Everything is a blur. Like, I, so we got to, like, making scallops, so we figured out finally how to caramelize scallops at home, which was cool. That's delicious. So we have, like, we got this little Cuisinart. By the way, what is it, Heartland? We are members of this meat delivery service. We're members! <laughs> this meat delivery service, <laughs> which is awesome. So I, re like, re up my order this last time for the next six months, and they brought me a, a grill, a wine fridge and a grill. And so on this indoor grill... We learned how to caramelize scallops, which were... Caramelize them on a grill? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. That was absolutely outstanding. So... I thought you'd had to do that, like, in a skillet, and then, like, you, like, keep putting the butter or something on top, or... I don't know. It, well, we use the flat part. So it's more mm -hmm. so, like, a skillet than it is a... But it has, like, a grill pan on one top, so you can flip oh. it. Like, if you're cooking meat and you wanted the fats and stuff to run out, you could flip it, or you mm -hmm. can cook on the, like, skillet, skillet side, so it still mm -hmm. has a lip on it, and then you can put the butter and caramelize and all that. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Did you like a salad situation with it? Always. I love baby spinach. Baby spinach is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, with balsamics and everything else. But, yeah. It wasn't in this, like I don't I don't eat very often anymore. So it's like whenever I do eat, I'm like, what did I have that I enjoy? Yesterday we went to brunch and it was d d d d oh, wonderful. Oh, we went to go see our the cute one. What's his name? Brendan. Oh. Yeah, we went to go see him at Shaw's. Outdoor? So. No, it was indoor. Oh. Yeah, okay. no, we sat indoor. Even though their outdoor patio was open and they had all the heaters out there and everything, it was packed. It was super packed. But yeah, we went to go see him. It was lovely. 
we did a workout and then we're like, well, if we're doing a workout, we have to brunch after. <laughs> so, that was lovely. Aww, that's fun. Yeah. Anyway, I guess that's really our weekend. That's our week. That's our recap. That's everything. Anyway, this is awesome. I like doing this on holidays because we have all the interaction. So thanks guys for hanging out this and talking to us. It's a long one too. Yeah, that's because we haven't been here in two weeks. I know. That's what happens whenever you have stuff to talk about. <laughs> all right. Well, our beautiful friends, thank you for... Yes, and accountability. <laughs> what week are we in now? We're day 15. Day 15. Yeah, shout out to all of our folks doing the Easton Accountability Challenge. Vicki, you are crushing it. You oh my are, gosh. Uh, my this girl is motivating literally everyone. She is in her garage murdering it every she's day. She's got straight like a, what do they call that thing? Crossfit, CrossFit? box. Yeah, she's oh got a CrossFit box gosh. in her gym. It's pretty cool. So, cheers to everybody doing that and keeping us accountable. Um, and thanks for you guys who hung out with us on the video yesterday. We did a, Andrew and Franklin devised a hit training and then... Andrew ran through it with us, so that was a lot of fun. I thought I was gonna die. I was For like, real? "Yeah, man!" It was like my face is all sorts of red, looking crazy. Yeah. Oh. Did you try and smile through the workout like the girls do and the people do in the workout videos? No. If you look at me in the back, I'm like <laughs> looking horrified, and I was doing my because I have bad knees, right? So Ooh. years and years of being overweight does to you. But so I had to do a lot of different modified things. So instead mm. of doing lunges, I, I was doing like overhead cleans and all sorts yeah. of stuff with weighted bars so Yikes. um <laughs> it's like it just vicky and georgette yeah yeah and georgette for sure you guys are are amazing That's exciting. Yeah. and oh. thanks drew for the hit workout mm -hmm. what is it high intensity, intensity interval training interval training okay yeah. so we did four rounds of like eight different sections and so I don't Ooh. do I don't do no burpee. I was doing mountain Whoa! climbers instead. I was like, and he just had us hold these planks before. Nope. <laughs> I mean, a mountain climb is not easy either. You know, I felt like I was listening to like body or something by <laughs> by yes. my was doing it. I was like, Ew. don't you know that anytime I'm working out and that song comes on, I get super high. And I'm like, I can do everything ten times faster and with fifty pounds more. And... That's great. It's great what music does to the soul. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, I guess this is like this is a very long Southern goodbye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye now. Bye bye now. We love you. Happy Monday. Hope you have a wonderful week. <laughs>